this PowerPoint is going to take us through uh, the concepts relating to the uniqueness of human communication. So what makes human communication different from how animals communicate? Human communication is different from animal communication in several ways. I want you to have a think about, so pause here and do a quick brainstorm. What kind of language do animals use? All right, um, we're gonna watch this video. All animals communicate. Crabs wave their claws at each other to signal that they're healthy and ready to mate. Cuttlefish use pigmented skin cells called chromatophores to create patterns on their skin that act as camouflage or warnings to rivals. Honeybees perform complex dances to let other bees know the location and quality of a food source. All of these animals have impressive communication systems, but do they have language? To answer that question, we can look at four specific qualities that are often associated with language. Discreteness, grammar, productivity, and displacement. Discreteness means that there is a set of individual units, such as sounds or words, that can be combined to communicate new ideas. Like a set of refrigerator poetry magnets you can rearrange to create different phrases. Grammar provides a system of rules that tells you how to combine those individual units. Productivity is the ability to use language to create an infinite number of messages. And displacement is the ability to talk about things that aren't right in front of you, such as past, future, or fictional events. So, does animal communication exhibit any of these qualities? For crabs and cuttlefish, the answer is no. They don't combine their signals in creative ways. Those signals also don't have to be in a grammatical order. And they only communicate current conditions, like I am healthy or I am poisonous but some animals actually do display some of these properties. Bees use the moves, angle, duration, and intensity of their waggle dance to describe the location and richness of a food source. That source is outside the hive, so they exhibit the property of displacement. They share that language trait with prairie dogs, which live in towns of thousands and are hunted by coyotes, hawks, badgers, snakes, and humans. Their alarm calls indicate the predator's size, shape, speed, and even for human predators, what the person is wearing and if he's carrying a gun. Great apes like chimps and gorillas are great communicators too. Some have even learned a modified sign language. A chimpanzee named Washo demonstrated discreteness by combining multiple signs into original phrases like please open, hurry. Coco. A female gorilla who understands more than 1,000 signs and around 2,000 words of spoken English referred to a beloved kitten that had died. In doing so, she displayed displacement, though it's worth noting that the apes in both of these examples were using a human communication system, not one that appeared naturally in the wild. There are many other examples of sophisticated animal communication, such as in dolphins, which use whistles to identify age, location, names, and gender. They can also understand some grammar in a gestural language researchers use to communicate with them. However, grammar is not seen in the dolphin's natural communication. While these communication systems may have some of the qualities of language we've identified, none display all four. Even Washo and Coco's impressive abilities are still outpaced by the language skills of most three-year-old humans. And animals' topics of conversation are usually limited. Bees talk about food, prairie dogs talk about predators, and crabs talk about themselves. Human language stands alone due to the powerful combination of grammar and productivity on top of discreteness and displacement. The human brain can take a finite number of elements and create an infinite number of messages. We can craft and understand complex sentences, as well as words that have never been spoken before. We can use language to communicate about an endless range of subjects, talk about imaginary things, and even lie. Research continues to reveal more and more about animal communication. 
it may turn out that human language and animal communication aren't entirely different, but exist on a continuum. After all, we are all animals. All right. <clears throat> okay, so quickly jot down, um, based on your knowledge and the what you've just seen in that video, just jot down what are the features of human language that make it different to animal language. All right, so there are several key features that distinguish human language as unique from animal language. We're only gonna be focusing on these ones. So we have spontaneity and displacement, arbitrariness, structuring creativity, and cultural transmission. So you'll notice that the language is a little bit different from what was in the video, but that's okay. I'll explain it as we go through. Okay, spontaneity and displacement. Humans, unlike animals, are able to speak without first being prompted. If you consider a bird, like Alex, who we're gonna talk about in a minute, speaking, um, they need to be prompted with some sort of cue like a treat. Humans don't need this. We can and do initiate conversation at any time. All right, so Alex is a parrot, a grey parrot, um, who learnt a whole lot of words. I'd like you just to pause here and just go to his Wikipedia page and have a quick read about him and then come back. Okay, so... Um, we're going to watch a video of Alex the parrot. I want you to think about why he does not demonstrate dem um, spontaneity and displacement here. Alex, what matter? Whoa, that's right. How many? Two. That's right. You're a good boy. Go no, sweetie. No, you can't go back yet. You got to... Do you want some water? All right. Do you want some water? Or are you just asking to interrupt? Are you just asking to interrupt? I know. Go back? I know. Okay. Look. What color bigger? What color bigger? Green. Green. Oh, you're a good go boy. Alex, look. Well, look what I got for you. Hey, look. Look at all these neat toys. Look. Hey, look. Can you tell me? On the tray, how many green block? Green block. Good parrot. Two green block. Two. Good parrot. One of the things Alex doesn't have is a knee-jerk response to the types of objects that you present him. He can look at two objects and answer several different types of questions about those objects, or he can look at a novel collection of items and answer questions about that collection. What this shows us is that he really understands what those questions mean. Little thing. Yes, Alex. You're That's right. right. Good boy. Right. Alex describing objects. Alex saying, probably want more than a cracker. That's what you want? I want banana. Carrot. Good birdie. I want corn. Soft corn. Soft corn. Good parrot. We've got rock corn. That's dried corn. And we've got soft corn, too. Coal. It's coal. Yes, it's coal. It's from the refrigerator. Go pick up corn. Well, no, I'm not going to pick up the corn you threw down. Yeah. Using his beak, he could tell you what matter objects were made of. Rock? Good boy. Rock. What matter? What matter, Alex? What? What? That's good right. boy. Whoa. That's good boy. right. Whoa. And amazingly, on a tray, he could tell you the number of squares from the number of balls, the number of each color. How many blue blocks? Four. Four is right. right. Good parrot. He's okay. choosing from among all the possible answers. Remember, he sees this object. If he was giving a knee-jerk response, he would say paper every time he saw this thing. He tried to restrain himself when student parrots like this one got it wrong. What matter? <coughs> then Alex would interject with his equivalent of duh. What matter? What? As parrots go, he was simply Einstein. When we were there, even Einstein got hungry. Well, you're the boy. Want to go eat dinner? I know, I know. It's time to eat dinner, sweetie. I know it's time, but we have to do one more chore, okay? And then Alex declared it was over. 
want to go back. We want to go back. And now, somewhere in parrot heaven, the angels are marveling at what God wrought. Alex the parrot has... All right. So, unfortunately, um, Alex the parrot has died. Um, but, as we can see, his language was just phenomenal. But he doesn't demonstrate spontaneity and displacement. Why? Because he is only able to talk about the things that are presented right in front of him. He's able to do that in an absolutely amazing way, but he's not able to just think of a concept and say something. It needs to be prompted by an object. All right, on to the second one. Human language is arbitrary in that we have all agreed that words are symbols that represent uh, particular meanings. Why is an apple called an apple? Couldn't it just as easily be called a banana? And the answer to that is yes, except that we have all decided that an apple is called an apple. And that's what arbitrary means. It means there's no real um, meaning behind it. It's just a decision we've all come to as, um, as English speakers. All right, structure and creativity. Human language has endless possibilities because we're able to combine and recombine the elements of language. So morphemes, lexemes, phrases, clauses, and so on to create new forms. We can produce new expressions and sentences with the building blocks that we have. So if we think about a phrase like a few kangaroos loose in the top paddock, yes, okay, that could literally mean there are a few kangaroos who have gotten out of some kind of, I don't know, field that they're supposed to be kept in um, and they're roaming around the top paddock. But what we know it to mean culturally is that someone's not quite right in the head, okay? Cultural transmission. Humans pass their language down from generation to generation. Children will learn to produce different sounds depending on the language they grow up speaking. In contrast, a dog who lives with an English family and a Japanese, a dog who lives with a Japanese family won't learn to make different sounds when it barks. The sounds that a dog makes are always the same. Whereas if you have a child with an English family, child with a Japanese family, one will grow up speaking English, one will grow up speaking Japanese. Okay. Um, I, yeah, is this, yes. Okay, so we're going to watch um, a video and then um, you will need to go and complete. Okay, um, you need to have a think about these questions as we're watching the video. So can Kanzi use language in the same way that humans can? All right, and then you need to write, so you need to pause after we've watched the video and write a paragraph exploring how animals use language using Alex the parrot and Kanzi in your answer. Banana. Banana. Very nice. Banana. Banana. Can you find peanuts? Peanut. Thank you. Will you find eggs? Sherman. Egg. Good. Can you find milk? Milk. Milk. If you would like to watch the rest of the video, um, you can look it up on YouTube. Otherwise, go back and um, do that paragraph, please. Okay, so um, we have another task for you to do. So you need to do, this will be on Google Classroom. Um, it's the animal communication task. Open that up and complete it and then send it to your teacher once you're done, please. <laughs> 